This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Today we are honored to have as our Sister Power VIP guest, Brigadier General Suzanne P. Varis Lum. Today's topic, what is women, peace, and security? Brigadier General Lum is the Mobilization Assistant to Director of Strategic Plans and Policy, U.S. Pacific Command at Camp Smith, Hawaii. She has a key role in the Pacific Command's effort to shape and maintain regional security through development of diplomatic, economic, and military policies. This includes building and maintaining military-to-military -military and political-military relationships among the 43 nations within the Pacific region, covering over 51% of the globe. Activities include disaster, management, humanitarian assistance, homeland defense, appropriate oversight of reserve component matters, and as a senior leader within the Directorate Oversight of Strategy and Policy Issues that Influence the Pacific Region. Brigadier Lung is the 19th General Officer and the first female General Officer commissioned from the University of Hawaii at Manoa ROTC program and was inducted into the ROTC Hall of Fame at Fort Knox. She is the first female of Hawaiian ancestry to achieve the rank of Brigadier General in the National Guard. She is active in Pan-Pacific American Leadership Mentorship Hawaii chapter and has been a speaker, panelist, and active mentor for a multitude of community events, including high school veterans, jobs, corps, and ROTC events. General Love, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you, Sharon. It is a pleasure and honor to be here with you today. Oh, I'm so happy to I'm so happy to have you here. And before we touch on our topic, what is women, peace and security? What does that have to do with the military? You know, great question, and most people ask that question. What does women, peace, and security have to do with the military, and what is it? A lot of people think women, peace, and security has to do with um, the number of women, women's empowerment alone, but there, it's really a broad scope. It includes women's empowerment, but really it is based on the UN Security Council Resolution 1325, Women, Peace, and Security. In the year 2000, the UN said, they realize that women and children are victims of conflict more than any other population. And they also are disproportionately represented in the peace process. They really are not included in that peace process. Mm -hmm. So Women, Peace, and Security looks at, has called the um, member nations, member states in the UN to look at how women can be part of conflict resolution, management, and, and, and prevention of conflict. Um, so many nations within the UN have adopted a national action plan, and the United States has adopted the national action plan as well, um, which is very exciting. And that really includes not only um, empowerment of women or involvement of women, uh, but it has to do with protection, um, also including them in anti-terrorism, um, including them in um, conflict res resolution, uh, reconstruction and recovery, so there's a lot of areas in which um, women, peace, and security covers. And also, um, I have a, uh, while, while I don't have the slide here, I wanted to talk a little bit about, there's several resolutions under that um, that deal with sexual violence as a war crime, uh, women in peacekeeping, women in the peace process, violence against women and children, sexual violence in conflict and post-conflict, women's role in conflict prevention and resolution, and women as peacekeepers and women countering violent extremism. So you can see already by those titles of those other resolutions under 1325 that deal with conflict. And so why are we in the military interested in that? That 
it has shown throughout the, all the statistics that a country's peace, prosperity, and stability is directly linked to how women are treated. And all you got to do is list the names of the countries that are prosperous um, economically, that are stable, that have, um, you know, people are laughing, people are happy. Mm. Well, how those women are treated, access to education, health care, involvement in the government, involvement in business, um, protection against violence, those are d direct correlations to peace and stability. And of course, in the military, we want peace and security. Um, you know, our objectives here within the U.S. Pacific Command is to ensure peace and prosperity and stability for everyone. And uh, women, peace, and security falls right into that. Sounds wonderful. Who do you consider your greatest mentor and why? You know, that's a great question because I, I can't share and pick just one. <laughs> okay. That's a hard one. Um, <laughs> Because there have been many throughout my life, and as we go through these seasons in our life, you know, growing up, uh, my grandparents, I, my dad is from Maui, and uh, I spent a lot of my summers with my grandparents, who um, were from Paia and the Huelo area, and they moved to Kahului after the plantation uh, shut down, and I spent most of my summers there. I learned a lot about hard work. Um, I learned a lot about um, you're not going to get anything for free. You're going to work for it. Mm -hmm. To treat others with respect, share what you have, all of those values that kind of set me up to, um, uh, as I was growing up and having other these other coaches and teachers throughout school that told me that it's okay that you don't have a lot of money, that you come from uh, difficult circumstances, but you can do it if you work hard and education there, there are people there to help. And that really inspired me. And so when I went into the military, um, ROTC at the University of Hawaii, a lot of uh, professors at the University of Hawaii, as well as uh, professors of military science there at the ROTC program. And then when I went on active duty, great leaders. My first, actually my first unit was a field artillery unit. Very few women were in combat arms at that time. In uh, 1989, I went on active duty, went, into, went to Germany, uh, was stationed at a field artillery unit. I was one of two female officers. Uh, and yet, all of these male officers that were field artillery for a military intelligence officer provided me a lot of mentorship. They taught me um, some of the difficult tasks and taught me a lot about uh, perseverance and never giving up. And then later on in life, when I went into the guard, came home, um, Colonel retired Walt Kaniakua, who was the military uh, executive for Senator Inouye, was actually a great mentor of mine and has been and still is. He continues to, um, to help me along the way, to, to remind me that anything is possible. Be prepared for opportunities and give your all, no matter what, selfless service. So um, those are a lot. There are a lot more. It, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yes. it, it, the audience can see that Senator Daniel you know, was, is a, was a mentor of mine as well, and we're both looking at a picture of him, and, and I feel you on that. And another question for you. Why did you want to move up the ladder? You know, I, you know, I never really thought about moving up the ladder. I, I would not have envisioned myself today sitting in front of you as a Brigadier General. That, that was never in my mind. What I wanted to do was do something meaningful to serve and give, use my talents in, in the way that would be useful. And it just turned out that opportunity presented itself and doors opened. And people convinced me that, no, you can, you can use your talents at a higher level. And you have to believe in yourself that you can do it. So that's um, kind of how I viewed it. I didn't view uh, it in terms of rank, but, but in terms of continue to drive forward and believe that you can have a greater impact, even when you don't think you can. Looking at you, Susie, my friend, Brigadier General, I'm looking at all of these beautiful accessories. Just very quickly, can you go over them with, they're just gorgeous and it, it means something. Each one means some type of accomplishment, am I correct? Well, you know, it's sort of our, um, when we wear our dress uniform, it kind of identify some of the things that we've been through, where we've been, if we've been deployed to Iraq, you know, or, or we've 
you know, what kind of decorations or rewards we've gotten. And, um, and we don't always wear them, or, or that we've been to certain schools like Air Assault or Airborne, um, or that we've deployed with a unit like the 29th Infantry Brigade to Iraq during OIF-3, or the unit I belong to, U.S. Pacific Command now okay. at Camp Smith. So it, it kind of uh, tells a story, or that your military intelligence and that your, your unit has the distinguished uh, unit citation. So it kind of all... Um, you know, people who are in the military can quickly identify sure. um, uh, some relationship. And, you know, over time, you know, when you see Vietnam era, Korean War, World War II, you can see um, their badges and you'll know. You know, my dad's a Vietnam veteran, so, you know, having that V on there. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of a bond, unspoken bond. You don't have to say anything. You just kind of look and you know. Eye candy. <laughs> Absolutely. Why is it so important for women in the military to maintain a sense of self? You know, I think um, that's always a challenge for everyone because women um, are clearly identifiable. Uh, when we talk about diversity, we often look at the exterior, but really diversity um, has, is so much more, diversity of thought, your experiences, your culture, where you came from. Um, those things bond each other. And women is, are one, ca one element of that diversity. Um, so I think it's important that they come and, and embrace their talents that they come with. Because I like um, this idea that, you know, women make up 50% of the population around the world. And we come with different ideas and different talents. And, uh, and each one is unique, and I think we have to embrace that and see how that contributes. So maybe we might, um, um, you know, bring a, a certain perspective, a gender perspective, and that's part of Women, Peace, and Security, by the way, a, a gender perspective based on your experiences that you've grown up with, um, um, experiences um, in terms of seeing the needs of other women across the country, across these countries where, um, uh, you can relate to. Um, so I think we need to embrace that and bring that as a strength, that those differences, you know, equality doesn't mean sameness. Mm. That means that we all come with something unique to offer to the table and in the military to accomplish the mission. I like that. And we were speaking earlier about some statistics. And as of July 2017, Active Guard Reserve for the Army, we have now 45 female generals. And we're going to go to break, and we want to come back and talk about that and, and tell us how far we've come. And we still have more work to do. I'm looking forward to that. Stay with us. Keep yourself motivated, empowered, and don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with Sister Power. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power. And we're here with General Suzanne Lum. And our topic for today is what is women, peace, and security. Before we went, went to break, the statistics is as of July 2017, Active Guard Reserve for the Army, we have now 45 female generals. 
what does that say to you? That says that we've made significant progress, you know, and that's just the Army alone and the other services as well. We've seen amazing progress. You know, women throughout time have served. You know, in our nation's history, if we look at some of our past heroes, and uh, I, I have a picture here that maybe I'd like, I'd like to share that uh, right. has some of those uh, heroes of our past. And if you look at, uh, you can see Margaret Corbin, who was wounded by operating the artillery, that little statue that there um, in defense of Fort Washington during the Revolutionary War. And right next to her is that picture of Dr. Uh, Mary Walker, who received the Medal of Honor for her services at the first Battle of Bull Run, the only woman to receive that award. And right next to her is a small picture that represents World War I. Over 400 Army nurses, believe it or not, made the ultimate sacrifice, and people do not remember that. And the picture right next to it is a famous one on Life magazine after December 7, 1941. Uh, you can see um, the women coming to the call of duty mm -hmm. um, to put out the fires. But World War II really opened up a huge opportunity for women of all ethnicities who were mobilized. And you can see that in this picture here um, of uh, women in the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, women accepted for volunteer emergency services, and the Women's Air Force Services. And the pilots there um, in the center, you know, 38 female pilots lost their lives because they ferried planes from factories to bases and transporting cargo and participating in strafing and target missions and millions of miles. Um, so those are the unsung heroes that we don't hear about, as well as the African-American women, Army nurses and Asian-American women who served also in the um, intelligence services for translating. They are often not talked about, but they quietly served um, in a way that uh, inspires me and inspires so many others. And that has led to an amazing um, um, significant movement of opportunities for women in the military. And actually, just in 2015, our former Secretary of Defense Carter allowed women to be, um, go into all combat roles. And so this past March, we've had our first in the Army female infantry and field artillery um, enlisted personnel go into the courses. Um, and last year, if you remember, we had our first two female Army Rangers who graduated from the Army Ranger School. So a lot of significant progress. But we also have a lot of stars who've paved the way. And I have another picture to share um, with some of our, our stars, All right. our trailblazers, as we call them. And as you can see there, there's a picture on the bottom, the first Rear Admiral, amazing Grace Hopper, definitely historic role model for so many. Um, and directly above her is General Dunwoody, who was the first ever female four-star in 2008 in the Army, and I was fortunate enough to meet her uh, a few months ago. She was inducted into the National Defense University Hall of Fame, along with uh, Senator McCain, uh, General Shinseki, so she was one of them that was acknowledged. Also to her left is our first female four-star admiral, African-American descent, so very proud of her. And then to the right, um, General Robinson, who was the Pacific Air Forces commander here in Hawaii, first female Pacific Air Forces commander, first female to be a combatant commander for a U.S. Northern Command, which is all of the, the um, Americas, the continental U.S. Uh, and I was able to see her the other week, and I told her that I'm always so proud of her and that she's paved the way. And of course, she said, I'm proud of you, because she's all, and so did General Dunwoody when I got to meet her. But that's the whole idea of as they achieve their rank, they're pulling down and bringing up everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as we reach for the mm -hmm. summit, we're bringing people with us. It's not alone. It, we do it together. That's what it's all about, mm -hmm. paying it forward. Mm -hmm. Another question for you. One of my girlfriends uh, who promoted uh, Army, Nurse Army of the Year, and she asked me to ask you, what was the most significant experience you had in the field of combat war? I would say um, during OIF-3, 2005, 2006, I was deployed to Iraq. I was the um, commander of the Joint Intel Center, so we had Army and Air Force, to try to get to the problem of a, a lot of the IEDs, uh, improvised explosive devices or roadside bombs. There was a significant number on an average day, um, 
maybe 30 within our area, MS, main supply routes, we called them, uh, that went up and down for everything from a little Coke can to larger uh, munitions that were dug down deep, um, you know, remote detonated, I mean, just the whole range, um, that extreme danger to our, our coalition troops on the roads. Um, so we had intel analysts going out. We had uh, analysts in um, Anaconda, we called it, but uh, Air Force called it Balad Air Base. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for me, losing one of my own soldiers, Sergeant Dason Cariaga, very young, he volunteered, mm -hmm. uh, amazing hero, um, great family here in Hawaii, our first casualty from the Hawaii National Guard um, since Vietnam since the call-up of 1969 of the 29th Infantry Brigade. So for me, it was dealing with that loss and seeing how our team was going to deal with that loss uh, and how do we continue the mission even though everyone's hurting inside from that yeah. amazing loss. But he's a hero and I will never forget when I think of young people, I mean, again, he wasn't 21 yet, was not 21, and yet, um, he was not afraid. He knew what he had to do to, to gather in an intelligence to support the mission. So, Was that one of your memorable experiences in the military, or just one of them? It was one. There are many. But to me, that, that's a powerful When we lose one, yes. it, you remember that, you know, somebody said the reason why the military oftentimes is hesitant um, or, or thinks very carefully about how we get in things very carefully about conflict and peace. That it's strength through peace. It's through our strength and our deterrence that we can achieve peace. But to me, um, that understanding of loss, that mm. this is, uh, um, there's serious consequences for, for decisions that we make. So I, I think that was very significant. I'm sure. What information did you find out after receiving rank that you today would pass on to another woman? I would say sit at the table. Mm. Don't be afraid to sit at the table. Don't be afraid to give your opinion. Don't be afraid to, um, to try something new. And if you get shot down, you dust yourself off, you get back up, and you go it again. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just pull those banks up and absolutely, keep on going. Absolutely, absolutely. Wonderful. If you could give one message to other women considering the military as a career, what would it be and why? You know, the military um, is about service. It's about loyalty, duty, you know, respect, honor, integrity, selfless service. Um, those characteristics that you learn from the experiences in the military transcend all aspects of life. And I think if you live your life in uniform, out of uniform, in that way, to serve others, um, you know, there's such great joy in that. There's a peace in that. To know that uh, what you're doing and you wake up in the morning, like, I'm doing something mm -hmm. that I feel good about. Um, I think, and now, there's so many opportunities for women. I would say when I came in 30 years ago, um, I, as I said, I, I didn't imagine myself to be a brig Brigadier General, but I thought it was exciting. Mm -hmm. and I, I saw the um, excitement um, and, and uh, people being willing to go into really austere situations and not thinking about themselves, but thinking about the mission thinking about what I'm doing. And at that time, I saw this scope. But now where I'm at, I'm seeing a broader scope, what it means to peace and security around the world. You know, And that seems counterintuitive to people sometimes. You know, Military and peace, no, but peace through, through strength. And yeah. I think that's what people don't understand, mm -hmm. that the military, you want peace more than anyone. Exactly. And, and just briefly, Take us there. Take us on the mindset of the military when people have this concept that the military is about fighting and winning, and, and I know it's more than that. 
you know, there are only a small percentage of our force is combat arms and infantry, the actual fighters. The vast majority, you know, 80 plus percent, are there combat support, cyber, space, um, nurses, doctors, um, intelligence, you know, air transport, you know, our ships, servicing. So, you know, we, when we think of the military, we think of that percentage. And we're there to support that, those fighters. Um, but that has to be there in order for us to have a credible deterrence against those who seek to do harm against the U.S. and our interests. So when we understand that, then we see that we're here to provide that deterrence so that we can live the lives that um, we, we also deserve. Everyone deserves to have that peaceful life, to be able to go home, to send your kids to school yeah. peacefully, you know, all those things. It'd be great if nobody else wanted to do harm against the United States, then we, we wouldn't have to do that. But the fact remains, we live in a world where there are a lot of challenges, and we have to be ready for those challenges. Well, in 10 seconds or less, just sum up what we should know and leave him with. You've given us so much information, but give us in 10 seconds or less some empowering, inspiring words. I would say that uh, Never, never give up. And uh, for women out there who uh, are considering uh, military as a career, it's a great opportunity. And uh, what a way to challenge yourself, to serve, and, and to feel um, great about what you're doing every single day. Love that. But thank you so much, General Lum for joining us here at Sister Power. And again, our topic, what is women, peace, and security? And you've answered those questions for us. Again, oceans of aloha, peace and love. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was fun. It was. Very informative.